I'm just going to restart the, the Crazy Fly Simulator. Just by itself. Just to make sure everything that I haven't broken anything at the same time. And in the meantime, I'm actually going to go back to the Ubuntu uh, WSL2. And I'm going to open up the ROS workspace that I have. Let's see, what's the name again? ROS workspaces, obviously. With, with let's see, the gazebo bridge installed. And also like the controller for the simulator. For the, the simulated quadcopter that's run by ROS2. So that is uh, all working from WSL2. I think it's in Crazy Fly. And then we have, probably this is very difficult to see. And then this, there you go. I will just open up official code for this. At the same time, I'm opening up the, the repository and I will also share that in the chat itself. I think it's Ross GC Crazy Fly. So here you go. And this is, these are the packages for ROS to handle the gazebo simulator of the Crazy Fly itself. So that is kind of like this local humble and harmonic, Jesse and harmonic, but now ROS2 Ionic with gazebo Ionic, which is a new version of ROS2. <laughs> now, obviously this is Kilted Kaju, I have to, I have to change that. But at least like these are all kind of packages that use like the gazebo bridge, with the gazebo ROS bridge. Yeah, and it has a couple of these bring up files, which are practically the launch files. So here you go, official code. That's the same repository. I'm just left. So there is already Ross Kilted installed on here. Oh yeah, I first want to kind of like show you because you're probably asking, but Kim, is Gazebo actually, are you able to watch Gazebo topics from uh, WSL2 when Gazebo is actually running on Windows natively? Let's just start this up right now. You can! This is actually something new. <laughs> Very new. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so that's GC Sim... Oh no, GC Topic List. And let me just zoom in a little bit. Hello Evie, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so here you go. So like there's no gazebo running on WSL2, but it's actually receiving everything from from the gazebo from windows itself and let's see like you can also run or let's say let's have gazebo right here and we can have there you go so you can see the crazy fly and then you see like the terminal this is wsl2 because you can see that right here and we can also post something or publish something to that topic, uh, gazebo topic. Like, for instance, take off. Ah! <laughs> it's actually not taking off because it's, uh, I set it to rotate. That is not what you want. You want it to go up very slowly. There you go. Yeah. All right, cool. So now that we know that, let's make it stop. Stop. Yay, it stopped. Well, I don't want to type this in all the time from the terminal. So that's why you have to use ROS2 nodes. That's, that's obviously what you want to use in this case. So, so let's start uh, the gazebo simulator from Windows itself. Yeah, it's already overcomplicating everything. And uh, Evie is making my life uh, difficult again. <laughs> all right. Uh, So luckily I can now resize the window so I can place gazebo in places where Evie is not blocking the screen, which is here. Go and zoom into the crazy fly. Yay. And also run. Like I, I have so many times that I like, oh, why is it not flying? The simulator was not running. You can do that also. You can start it up from, but we start up from uh, with dash R, I believe. All right, so let's start up uh, the ROS2 node. So like you first have to, I first have to source, source the uh, Kilted ROS2 Kanju 
here. And let's just do a Colcon build just to make sure. Maybe I've made some changes. But I think I've also did it with Colcon build. Did I do it with Simlink install? I think so. What's this? Colcon build. Simlink install, I'm just looking at because I usually type it wrong. So that's Colcon build plus H, just to make sure. Simlink, do, do you guys know what Simlink install means <laughs> for those that are beginners in Rust? Evie, what are you doing? So Simlink install in, like if you want to build a Rust 2 package in Colcon means is that anything that I change in the in the Python script itself, because all of these things are kind of written in Python, that you don't have to rebuild everything by itself. It made it made links or symbolic links with those Python, same Python files in the install package. So like for instance, if I would change something in terms of the speed or like uh, for instance, like the, the speed here or any of the topics, like the default topics, I don't need to Colcom build every time. I can just to go ahead and just relaunch the, the nodes and it's all fine and dandy. All right, I have now two cats. <laughs> two cats making it my life a lot more difficult. So it's... Uh... <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Coding with cats, it uh, makes things like 10 times so difficult. Okay, so we want to launch, the, let's say, bring up script. So I'm going to just to launch bring up. I've also added this variable to it as well, so that the gazebo on the WSL2 site will actually not start up, because that is actually already part of the launch file that I'm going to start up now, is that usually it would start up a gazebo simulator as well, which is an included launch description from the gazebo, the gazebo simulator Ross, Ross gazebo bridge. But I actually put in an if condition here, right here, that if I've put gazebo launch to false, it will not start up this particular node, let's say, which is another launch. Filed. And these are just like, you know, this is the argumentation, this is the bridge, and this is the control. If I say this is gazebo launch is false, and then it won't start gazebo on the WSL2 side. So there you go. All right, all right, all right. Did anything up start up? No, because I haven't sourced the install. The setup bash of the packages that I've just called to build. Of course, it cannot find it. <laughs> I cannot find it because there's a cat right in front of me. But that's that's not the reason. All right, cool. So the propellers are already turning, and it means is that I can actually start up an teleops nodes in a different terminal, which is also in WSL2, and also source killed it again. Teleop. With keyboards. So here's a teleop. You guys already know this from like you know controlling your robots. It's been used in a lot of tutorials. And if I just press T, it should take off. Then a surface is reenacted that will actually make the crazy fly take off and stay at their position. And if you would use like I and comma L then rotating very slowly, but there's reasons for it why it's so slow. <laughs> because like I couldn't really get it, like, you know, really keep the height properly if it was rotating even faster, which, you know, the Lee controller on the gazebo multicopter velocity plugin is, it needs some work, but also my external controller needs some work. All right, cool. So now it's flying on gazebo on the windows natively, and I'm controlling it from the Gazebo Ross bridge on WSL2, which is which runs on Ubuntu 2404, and a teleop node on the same platform, I'm able to control the robots just like that. Yay! 
So very slowly rotating though. But as you as you can see that now it doesn't it doesn't drop anymore. Like the performance not bug great, but at least it doesn't drop. It keeps on flying. That's all I want. So okay, let's go to Kilted, which is the latest uh, the latest release. From Kilted Kaju, and I think yeah, it should also work for Jazzy with no no issue whatsoever. But if you go to installation, Windows binary, and that's where the first time I actually saw any mention of it, which is like the Conda package manager. Which was actually something that they used to make the development environment for Windows a lot easier. And now with Kilt Scout you, it's also much easier to actually install the binaries of Windows. Which, I don't know if you guys remember installing it for Windows before, but this was like three times as long, all of these steps. But these are at least like instructions to install it on Windows if if you want to, or you can just see me struggle, that's fine too. So, and this, and this actually provides the the instructions to install Pixie on, uh, not Pixie, but ROS to kill the Kaju on Windows natively. Now I'm going to source that. I'll just do that right here in the command prop and I will go back. I've actually installed it right here in dev and then ROS and then it's like call because it's in virtual and then you do the install kilted and backslash doesn't exist on this keyboard which is like if you miss it it's 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 like the worst local setup no 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 set up set up the bash bat dot bat there you go and now we wait because it usually takes a while for command prop to uh, to do. I've called the uh, the source, but I will also make sure that there's also a pixie tunnel file in here. So I'm going to say pixie run run uh, RQT. Yeah, let's do it. So I will also or a different terminal. How do you say def backslash, which I have to copy from this, like in call install tilted setup.bash and or dot bat. And I will do a pixie run was to topic list. Yes, I can now actually receive the odometry of the crazy fly and it's going through two processes <laughs> at the same time. So it's actually receiving that from WSL2. Why it's a little bit, perhaps a little bit confluent is because I'm showing this all in Rostel Kilted Kaju and Gazebo Yonic. If it was just jazzy and harmonic, I would have probably put everything on pixie.toml with the robo stack and gazebo conda packages and then it would have all worked natively on windows but because i want to try the latest and the greatest here you go it's a little bit more of a complicated process on the other hand it also kind of like forces the full system to be tested out and it's nice to know that at least both ROS2 topics and gazebo topics can be received on both sides of Windows Native and WSL2. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm able to receive the ROS2 topic list. Now I want to open up RQT, which I've started in the other command line right here. And there you go. Ah! Okay, so if you want to open up a plotter in RQT, it's plugins, visualization, plot. And I also had to install something else. And let me just remove that. So I'm interested in the crazy fly a dormitory and then i think it's pose pose because if it's a stamped topic it's usually with the and then position and then i think it's set maybe yeah we now have the pose of the, the z position like plotted in rqt let's also show okay now i can resize it so nice use the docking uh, system from windows which we all want right so i can also probably start up 
do I have Antella up uh, thing on here? I don't think so. So just to be sure, I'm just going to do it from Ubuntu. Yay, okay, so this is still open, still on WSL, but if I run T or B, ah, then you can also see it on the plot. So I don't have to constantly watch the crazy fly in the actual simulator, because I have telemetry now. Yeah, and telemetry is what you want. <laughs> Do you prove... Uh, Evie, because you like, I'm literally not able to see anything due to your blocking my view with everything. So, yeah, <laughs> my working conditions, the judging, judging cat. Yeah, and I can still like like before, but I'm controlling it from the ROS2 file from Windows, so nothing really has changed here. But that is at least I'm able to show RQT, which is a GUI uh, variant of of ROS2 in native windows itself i can resize it it's probably running faster i don't know i don't think i don't think it really matters but maybe what what actually it matters for is what i would say rather rqt let's run arvis 2 which is kind of like a topic visualization that's more 3d and it is a pretty cool pretty cool platform oh there you go speak of the devil thank you for joining us arvis 2 you're not making it easy for me to uh, indicate uh, Windows to be a good uh, <laughs> development platform. But I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Let me just resize uh, Windows right here. There you go. Awesome. And then this, this still also. Let's uh, find Crazy Fly again. Because now, of course, things have improved. Like, I'm now going to show you Arvis and then the rules. It's going to be a dormitory. There you go. See? But now it's all on. This is the cat right now. This is where you guys are uh, <laughs> sharing the chats. And this is like, it's literally like more than the screen. So you're making things very difficult for me. But that's okay. You're cute. That's, you got that going for you, so that's fine. <laughs> this is kind of like the, uh, the the final result of what I actually want to show you is that like Arvis 2 and RQ2 uh, on native Windows together, like made possible by the new Pixie install for Kilted Kaju, Gazebo also running from the Conda packages on native Windows, and also let's start up a that same node, let's say, and that's the control nodes that we can actually see it going up, going down. Yay. <laughs> so it's just going up and down. And then I want it to stop, go a bit far, and maybe go forward. So I'm now doing like I, maybe rotate a bit back. And let's maybe crash the drone. Shall we crash the drone? Let's crash the drone. There you go. Hit it. Ah, it's very slow crash. <laughs> All right. Yes, it has crashed. It's time for this stream to end. Thank you all for joining and uh, I hope to see you next week.